Hi, this is a video on how to diagnose deep endometriosis on transvaginal ultrasound. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. People often say you can't see endometriosis on ultrasound, but that's just not true. And I'll show you how you can see it with some examples. On a routine pelvic ultrasound, you usually look at the uterus and ovaries, but you also need to look for deep endometriosis, mobility and site-specific tenderness. This paper from 2016 from the IDEA group gave us a systematic approach and language in the evaluation of women with suspected endometriosis. This is how I do it. This is their first step a systematic routine pelvic scan looking for features of endometriosis, such as adenomyosis, ovarian endometrioma and ovarian adhesions. In this scan, you can see that the uterus is antiverted but retroflexed, and this is due to adhesions behind the uterus. This case has a severe diffuse adenomyosis, where the uterus is bulky and globular, with small myometrial cysts, stripy shadowing, and an indistinct endomyometrial junction. In some cases of adenomyosis, you can see islands of endometrium in the myometrium. And on 3D, you see an irregular endomyometrial junction with budding of the endometrium into the myometrium. An ovarian endometrioma would be a unilocular cyst with ground glass echogenicity contents and often some shadowing, minor vascularity. And you can see that this ovary is adherent to the back of the cervix. This is the level of the internal os just there. And compare that to the other ovary with which the very gentle pressure of the probe in the vagina is cantilevering. That's a nice mobile ovary. Ovarian endometriomas are rarely isolated, so you also need to look for deep endometriosis. But when you're in the transverse plane, you can even here just see that these ovaries are adherent to each other. These are kissing ovaries with bilateral endometriomas, and they're adherent to the back of the cervix as well. Uh, a scan may say that the ovary is low, and in this case, you really need to suspect endometriosis. Where this ovary is low, this is the level of the internal os, and there is the level of the torus. And in the transverse plane, internal os, torus, you can see the left uterosacral ligament, and this ovary is adherent to it. The sliding sign should be part of uh, every systematic routine gynae scan. And this paper, these ones from 2013, describe the sliding sign for the first time. This is a normal sliding sign where the uterus moves one way and the bowel behind it moves in the opposite way when you very gently press your probe against the cervix. This should not hurt. Compare that to an abnormal sliding sign where with very gentle pressure, there's movement, but everything moves together. The uterus, the ovary and the bowel, it's all glued together, an abnormal sliding sign. Next, you look for nodules of deep endometriosis. And I usually start in the posterior compartment and I break it up into small sections. Here I'm putting the probe in gently, pushing the cervix away. And here is a nodule of deep endometriosis in the posterior vaginal fornix. And that looks like that and on speculum examination. Next, I look at the ligaments at the torus and uterosacral ligaments. And we saw already what normal ligaments look like. And this is thick fibrotic uterosacral ligaments behind the cervix with a nodule of deep endometriosis in it. And on the transverse plane, you can clearly see thick fibrotic uterosacral ligaments. Next, we look at bowel, and to look at bowel, you need to be in the posterior fornix. So a lot of ultrasound is done through the anterior fornix. We need to withdraw the probe a bit and angle it backwards um, into the posterior fornix. This is the external cervical os, this is some mucus in the canal, and this is the internal os. And I'll show you how I'm going to very gently withdraw the probe a little bit and then angle my probe backwards toward the sacrum and then very gently insert it while saying, let your knees go floppy and your bottom sink into the bed to the patient. And you can see there the posterior fornix where it attaches to cervix, some fluid in the pouch of Douglas, the uterosacral ligament stretched over the posterior vaginal fornix. There is the peritoneal reflection. 
And when you're in the posterior fornix, you know where you are because you've pushed the whole uterus out of the way that way. And what you can see outlined nicely by some fluid there is the different layers of the bowel. So the white is the serosa, and this hypoechoic area comprising of two layers is muscularis, the outer longitudinal layer, the inner circular layer, and here is a little bit of fibrotic tissue between them. This is a normal muscularis covered by submucosa and mucosa, the same on the other side. And then this is the, the posterior wall muscularis and serosa. So the lumen of the bowel is just there. And deep endometriosis only ever affects the anterior muscularis layer. And it looks like that, where you've got normal muscularis coming into it, and then this abnormal lesion, and then normal muscularis again there. So the nodule looks like this, with this overlying uh, nice normal mucosa and submucosa. You can see muscularis going into it and going out of it. And you can also see normal muscularis just on the other side with normal serosa. And you can see the difference in the, the bowel thickness there. There's very little um, vascularity there and it's always in the anterior wall. If you see something like that in the posterior wall, you need to think of alternative pathology. And on this video clip, you can easily see there's nice, normal posterior vaginal fornix. There's thick fibrosis in the uterosacral ligaments with deep endometriosis within. And here is that bowel nodule with normal muscularis going into it and normal muscularis going out of it. When I drew a picture for this patient, I drew it like this, where you can see some deep endometriosis there. That's the bowel lesion. And there's an, an ovary stuck with an endometrioma. This is what her laparoscopy showed. So you can see, you could see more at um, ultrasound than you could at laparoscopy. It's important if all layers are affected. And in this example here, you can see that there's posterior fauna seal involvement and the ligaments are thick and fibrotic with deep endometriosis and the bowel is involved as well. So this is very important where you've got vaginal involvement, uh, ligaments and bowel. This is an example of a patient with a frozen pelvis to demonstrate how much more you can see on ultrasound than at laparoscopy. At ultrasound, we knew that the pelvis was frozen. We knew that she had a right ovarian endometrioma with um, adhesions of both the ovaries to the back of the uterus, but also that she had a bowel nodule and that was not obvious uh, at diagnostic laparoscopy. At the end of the scan, don't forget the anterior compartment, looking at the bladder, and in this case, this is a very large bladder nodule of deep endometriosis. This case is a smaller nodule and you need to measure the distance between it and where the ureter enters the bladder. And then in this case, this is adenomyosis just beginning to extend into the surrounding tissues, getting close to the bladder wall. There's often uh, fibrosis around the ureter, in this case an ovary with a hemorrhagic cyst, some deep endometriosis in the ligaments there, and fibrosis and adhesions uh, to the ureter with a hydroureter above. And this is a different patient, but you often get a degree of hydronephrosis which will be silent. So you should always check the kidneys in women with endometriosis. If you want to learn more and learn how to do this yourself, save the date for the 9th of July. Thank you.